it feels like we're talking about coffee for the first time. Everyone was like, oh, I had no idea about mm -hmm. this. Recently, we partnered with This Side Up to hold an event enabling more than 15 farmers representing coffee growing origins from Asia, South America and Africa to come together alongside traders and roasters alike. In-depth discussions were held on topics ranging from cupping, technology, specialty robusta and the relevant subject of the coffee price crisis. The call with this side up was uh, going back to, to us meeting Sarah and meeting Leonard. Um, I don't know when, sometime in the past, and I think we share a certain philosophy and we have similar values and so it felt just great and cooperation was easily done. You guys have exactly the same vision as we do um, of uh, not creating another event of uh, kind of an elite event where people uh, sort of talk about the issues that um, matter more to producers than to us, but we talk about much more. We, we managed quite well to have an agenda where a lot of people learned a lot, but we, we foremost also triggered conversation together with producers, with traders, with roasters, uh, and also with coffee shop owners here in, in, in Germany. So I think that was very valuable. It's not very common that everybody get together and talk about the realities that we face. And so I think this uh, producer crossover event is a fantastic opportunity for people to really hear from one another what the realities are. Um, because I think it's, we cannot underestimate what people still do not understand about the realities of the situations we face. And so these events, I think, create a sense of community that maybe the bigger events don't. Um, and small roasters, like a lot of our clients are small to medium roasters, I think maybe they feel they can, they can connect with their producers and also feel like, yeah, you can do something. Yeah, we don't need the large trading corporation, we don't need the big roasting companies to change the coffee or specialty. We can do it here in a small event like this. So I think it's empowering. More and more people, they come into this warm, this, this warm family and they're not afraid to uh, say, really poignant things about what's wrong in the coffee industry, the way we should be treating each other. You are a specialty coffee player. We are uh, farmers. I already listened about this one, uh, about transparency, about uh, certification, about sustainability for a long time. But they never ask what we really need. They just ask what they really want. Telling us that whatever we think we're doing, we're still doing it from our white privilege. And uh, slowly but surely by including, I think half of the, half of the, of half of the audience comes from a position of marginalization somehow. So having that level playing field talking from that, I think was really, really cool. That, that kind of defines the stage. So um, I'm not immune against this. So I also am nervous when I go in there. Um, but ultimately, nobody's going to kill you. And ultimately, especially in those topics we were talking about right now, uh, there is no truth, there is no holy grail. And uh, whoever thinks that, I think is wrong. So um, if I have an idea, which I think I'm not completely an idiot, should at least trigger some kind of conversation, I'm happy about it because usually people benefit from it. I mean, I've even had people at this event say to me things like, if. Uh, if people can't produce coffee efficiently and they're more expensive, then shouldn't they just do something else? If it were that easy, yeah, but it's not. I mean, there are whole communities that exist only because of coffee, and there are five generations that way. And so it's really difficult to, in that kind of an environment, to say, well, you can't produce coffee cheaply enough so that you can sell it at a price that the market will buy. You should just get out. Like, that isn't... That's, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's much more complicated than that. Martin's talk really hit me mm -hmm. very hard, uh, talking about our role as traders, how we ourselves are kind of still in a, like, in a technological, like in a prehistoric phase, how there's much more that we can do. To be fair, I also think that sometimes farmers don't know what they need. Um, so 
we don't ask on the one hand on the other hand I always wonder do you really know what you need or or not and do you have the information mm -hmm. again I think it's it's great that everyone who was here will now go into the world and talk differently about 40% of coffee <laughs> or like yeah. The discussions held proved to be enlightening, passionate, and more than anything, a connecting experience for all those who attended. So what does the future of specialty coffee production look like in light of all of this? In the next and final episode, we talk more with the industry experts to gain insight in what they think could potentially be in store for the years to come. Always there are somebody who can change things, okay? But the question is for how long? When you think in terms of um, connection in, instead of differences, stuff like this happens. I think that's very sustainable. Thank you.